We specialize in protecting, preserving, and growing your wealth. Black Tower Financial Management, the team you want by your side. Visit blacktowerfm.com. So 16th of March, we're at 20% into the year, and it's a Thursday, which is an unusual one, because uh, we're talking to Christina Brady from Black Tower Financial Management. I've been calling this an extraordinary appearance from yourself because, <laughs> well, it's, you know, not everything can uh, hit a schedule when there's the financial markets we're talking about, and there's been news this week. Um, it's it's mostly the banks, right? I mean, I, I was aware of the initial bit, and why we set this up was the initial uh, collapse of the banks in the States, especially the Silicon Valley Bank. But it's more than that, right? What's going on? It is. On Friday, we learned that there was three banks in the US that were basically shut down. And the biggest one of those was the Silicon Valley Bank, Mm. um, which was one of the US's top 20 banks in assets. And it's the second largest banking failure in the US history after Lehman Brothers in Mm. 2007. Um, Now, Silicon Valley Bank was quite unique in the fact that it was obviously in Silicon Valley and its customers were cash-rich tech companies. So what they did was start-up companies. When they start up, they get lots of investment from investors and they put that all in a bank and they keep it there until they need it. Um, So it wasn't due – this failure isn't due to credit issues or poor lending. It made no loans whatsoever. But what it did was it had so much cash on its bank balance sheet, it had to do something with it. So it invested it in long dated US government bonds, which I think were 10 years long. And uh, at the time when it invested, the interest rate it was getting was just over 1%, which at the time seemed very, very good. Hmm. However, as we know, since then, inflation has risen and now on bonds, you get four or five percent. So what it means is that you are not the bank had invested its money in something that was not giving it a good return. So it meant that people started to worry um, that it couldn't uh, pay its that it couldn't get the money if they wanted to get their money out. Um, and so what happened was um, people did come and try and get their money out and it became very, very difficult for the bank. So what they had to do was they they decided they had to close down and um, they weren't bailed out. Okay. Someone came um, in. It was a bit of a rescue, wasn't it? I think HSBC came in for the UK arm. That's for the UK arm. That's yeah. different. In the US, what the US government said, that if you had deposits with them that were uh, within the guarantee, because each country has bank guarantees, Yeah. okay, and in the US, it's $250,000. In Europe, it's 100000 Euros and in the UK it's eighty five thousand pounds. That's per bank per client. Mm. So if people had over that, they were going to lose that money. Okay, so people started withdrawing their money. So they took their money out, and uh, so the US regulator said we are not going to um, do a bailout, but they would honour people up to the guaranteed amount. Okay, so that was that one. But obviously it's a huge one. And then on the back of that, we had Silvergate and Signature Bank had, well, they were more involved in cryptocurrencies. Okay, so what they did was they opened a, uh, it created the first 24-7 payment network for crypto clients. And so what that meant is uh, people had cryptocurrencies, they could go to this bank and they could get cash instead of it, Mm -hmm. okay? Okay. And there's still a bit of doubt over why the US government closed this bank down on Sunday because apparently there was no insolvency issued and it had good fundamentals, okay? And it had $16 billion on deposit for digital clients, but they just felt that they didn't have enough money to pay out if everyone came to them. And another US bank, which was um, dealing in cryptocurrencies, that was Silver Bank, uh, Signature Bank, sorry, and that originally started up um, as a bank for real estate and the legal industry and it and it moved towards cryptocurrencies yeah. um, and again um, what they've done is they have done a voluntary a voluntary um, close down so what they've done is they've gone for uh, um, they've closed down and what they've said voluntary liquidation um, and it's due they're saying to the collapse of the crypto FTX exchange but it means this one there will be a full full repayment of deposits now on the back of that we had a very very volatile trading day in the markets yesterday yes you could say that um, <laughs> to say the least 
<laughs> um, I, that's all I can say. It was unbelievable, mostly on banks, um, but the FTSE was down nearly 4% by the end of the day. But we did see a huge, huge fall in one bank, which was Credit Suisse, which is the second largest bank in Switzerland. Now, this shouldn't have been a shock to most people because Credit Suisse has been in trouble for quite a while. It's had scandal after scandal, mm. um, but its shares fell by another 20%, 1% yesterday before they halted trading in its shares. And what happened was its largest, largest um, uh, backer, which was Saudi National Bank, refused to give Credit Suisse more money. So what's happened is overnight, Swiss National Bank has intervened and it's given them a 54 billion loan to prop it up. And the shares have recovered this morning um, in Credit Suisse. They've gone back up. I think I've just read that they had gained, I can't remember how much it's gone up again. I think it's gone, they've gone up 40% from their lowest point no. yesterday. Um, but yesterday did affect the whole banking sector. So if we look at the figures for other banks, if you, if you, I don't know if anyone's been keeping track of them, but you would have seen that European banks were hit the worst. Uh, most of them fell by up to 10%. Deutsche Bank fell by 9%. We had BNP, we had Commerce Bank. And in the UK, UK banks were affected as well. Barclays was down over 8%, NatWest over 5%, uh, Morgan Stanley was over 6%. It's affected all the banks. Um, now, what's happened, because the Credit Suisse have been bailed out, it has meant we've seen the FTSE rising this morning. So what we've seen is the FTSE has gone up. Well, it had gone up over 1%. It's come back down now, actually. It's not up very much. Um, but there have been – the bank's stocks have come back up slightly. Yeah. So uh, the British banks have gained an average of 2%. They're still down. And I think what people need to do is – and I did phone a couple of clients yesterday that I know have large deposits in banks. Remember, in – Europe, you are only guaranteed a hundred thousand euros, and that's only if you have a current account or deposit account. Not if you have any investment like a fondo, etc. So if anything happens to those banks and you've got more than that money in there, you will lose everything above that amount. And the same goes for British banks. If you're in Barclays or NatWest, if something does happen. Um, and, you know, you, they, the, like in the US, they agree to honour deposits. It will only be up to the amount you are guaranteed. And the UK is 85000 per person. So if you have a joint account, obviously it's double the 85000 And remember, most banks in the, in the UK are linked. So if you're in Halifax and Lloyds, you're basically with the same bank. So it's only per parent bank. Ah. So people need to be very, very careful. I mean, it's, it's probably hard to say, but what are the chances of um, banks like Barclays and Lloyds being being affected and getting into trouble again? Well, it's very difficult to say. No one expected Lehman Brothers to collapse. Right. But you say credit, okay. someone like Credit Suisse had been in, in trouble for a while. Credit Suisse had been in, tr in trouble. And what I would suggest to people is this has affected all the banks. But once this dies down, keep an eye on your bank's share prices. If it seems to be falling more than other bank share prices, then I think I would be worried if I had more than the, you, you know, the amount in the banks. I'd be worried anyway if I had more than that amount in the banks at the moment. And you can look up, you know, if you see any headlines about your bank that seem to be out of sync with what they're saying about other banks. Um, we had this in Spain when they had to bail out Cam Bank and they had to bail out Bankia, etc. And what they're worrying about at the moment is um, there is the growing fears in the US of a recession. I know Mr. Hunt yesterday in his budget said that UK inflation will be down to between 3 and 4% by the end of the year. I'm sorry, that's a load of bull. Um, there is no way that's going to happen. The US is basically technically in recession. And now the Wall Street and the experts are worried that that is going to be a reality and it's going to be published. It looks like the Fed are expected to raise interest rates next week, which is worrying because then it puts more pressure on the banks. It, they're, cut, they're sort of stuck behind a rock and a hard place. They're not sure, you know, what to do for the best at the moment. Um, it is a very, very difficult time. I think people need to be patient, but I think needs, people need to be wary. Um, I had someone phone me yesterday, not a client, I hasten to add, who has a pension with uh, Zurich. 
And yeah. he was very worried because um, he checks the pension value every day, which I'd advise nobody to do, not to check <laughs> not their investments every day. every day, or it would give you a heart attack. Yeah. And he said, oh, my God, they've fallen so much. I said, yes. I said, have you looked at the market? And he went, well, how does the market affect my pension? Mm. And I, th- I think people need to understand pensions, invest your pension funds, unless it's a UK state pension or a state pension, in the markets. They have to yeah. to get a return to make your pensions grow. Mm-hmm. So if the markets are volatile and fall, your pensions will fall. And he was going, oh, should we pull out all the money? Well, firstly, no, because your tax bill would be huge. You know, in the UK, you're talking about 40% in Spain and in Europe, most probably more if you pulled all your money out of your pension. Secondly, you have to understand that markets are volatile. They do go down as well as up. I think people tend to think only of the good times when things have gone up. Remember 2007, 2008, the huge dip then. Remember March 20, when we saw the markets fall nearly 40% overnight, but they do recover. And the people it affects are people that are taking their pension now, that have invested it and need a fixed income because you may now be eating into your capital if the amount of income you're taking out is larger than the growth you're getting. And obviously, if the markets are falling, it's highly unlikely that your portfolios are actually making any money. So if you don't need to be taking money out of your investments or your pensions, and you're just taking it as extra income, it may be a good time to pair that back and say, look, do we need this money? Do we need as much? Could we cut back slightly for the short term until the markets recover? We'll have to wait and see what happens with the markets about this. But the the news that the uh, Swiss Central bank did step in uh, to shore up Credit Suisse is a good sign. Um, We just have to wait to see. I think what people were worried about was contagion. And I think that's something that happened last time. When something happens to one bank and it has a knock-on effect. I think in the US we had, you know, two sort of separate things. We had the banking with uh, obviously Silicon Valley, which was with startup companies, which is not your normal bank. And then we had the other two that were dealing cryptocurrencies. There was First Republic in uh, America did have problems as well. Um, But other banks stepped in to shore it up. So the Fed and JP Morgan gave it it $70 billion. This was First Republic Bank um, to stop it um, being under pressure. So while the Fed said it is not prepared to bail people out. I think if push comes to shove, it will. And in the UK, as we saw, following the discussions over the weekend, HSB has announced it had acquired uh, Swiss uh, Silicon Valley Bank in the UK for one pound. Mm. So what it did was it bought, bought over the operations of it. And the UK operations had 6.7 billion of deposits, 5.5 billion of loans, and three point, uh, what, just over 3,000 of clients. And most of those clients were startup companies, as I said, venture-backed companies and funds. Um, the Bank of England had warned that um, – it already warned them that, that they didn't have enough in place in case of insolvency. And the government said it did not want any public intervention in order to protect de- depositors. So HSBC has – jumped into, but that did mean that HSB shares actually fell the most yesterday. Um, You know, most of them were down about uh, 10%, as I said, but HSBC fell nearly 20%. Right, because they took on on some debt, I suppose, and took on this. Yes, well, they took on a huge liability. So that did impact HSBC HSB shares yesterday. I have to say, Um, I don't don't know whether it was that bit of news or whether there were some other mini rescues elsewhere, but um, the old cryptocurrency enjoyed some news following following the Silicon Valley banks, it really took <laughs> off. It ran because it had dropped the week before about 10% or something. But um, over that couple of days from Sunday evening um, through maybe to Tuesday, it, it went right up. Back over and now it's gone back pounds. down. I think they're down about two percent so far this well, it's morning. Set, it's kind of settled down, but it's um, yeah, it was quite the, it was quite the jump that. So I think a lot of people enjoyed that watching that for a change. But, uh, I think if it had, if if I think if I was someone, I think if it had jumped that much, I most probably would have cashed in if I could quite a lot of my position. <laughs> yeah, I have to say I did. <laughs> I did. I did, the I did cash out a little bit. Was coming out from the markets. Mm, yeah. Um, 
you know, it is worrying. It's worrying for everyone. Um, but as I say, if you take the proper precautions and you make sure that you are not over the guaranteed amount in your bank accounts, and remember, you've got to combine your current accounts with your deposit accounts. Okay, you don't get a hundred thousand, or in or in the UK, eighty-five thousand for a current account and eighty-five thousand for a deposit account. It's your banks. It's your accounts within that bank in total. I see. Yeah. Okay, and if you've got a joint account, as I said, you you get double that amount. Uh, I think people need to be careful there. If you have got more than that money in the bank, obviously don't take it out and put it under your bed. That is really not a good thing to do or keep it in a shoebox somewhere. God forbid you get broken into or your house catches fire or something like that. You've lost all your money. You can look at investing. I know the markets are volatile, but there's some low risk investings out there. And what people need to understand is if you put it in a investment, especially in space, you're going into what's called an insurance wrapper. Um, what it does, it gives you a small amount of, of life assurance. And these companies are managed completely different to banks. Okay, when you give your money to banks, banks lend out that money in the way of mortgages, loans, etc. Effectively, you've given your money to the bank. When you put it in an investment with one of these companies, it goes into a custodian account in your name and your name alone. It's not in the company you invested with, say it's Prudential or, or Zurich or anyone else. It's in an account in your name and that is ring fenced for your benefit. So God forbid the insurance company or that bank go down, the creditors cannot get that money because it is your money. So the risk you have got is the markets going up and down. But as we know with market volatility, they may go down, but they usually come back up. So people that have been wary of investing, please, please, I would urge you to get in touch, hopefully with Blacktail, and we can talk you through the differences between banks and investments and give you that little bit of peace of mind. Diversify your risk. And I know we say that about diversifying investment portfolios, but diversify your asset risk. So you should never have all your assets in something that is illiquid, like property, mm. because if you need cash, you can't get it. But if you have most of your money liquid in a bank, you need to think about changing your strategy and diversifying that risk. We'll have to see how the rest of um, the rest of this week um, pans out. But investors are braced as this is increasing fears of recession. As I said, the UK, uh, US is is feeling that recession is it, it is technically there, um, it, and hopefully it. You know, and it may be made official. In Europe, we're looking at the same sort of thing. You know, if you look around, Europe is technically in recession. You know, saying that it's 0.03% not yeah. in recession is, is not the same. We all know, and inflation is still going up. Consumer prices are still rising. So for the Chancellor in the UK to come out with such a bold statement to say that he feels inflation will be down to 3 4% by the end of the year, I think is... In Quite unlikely. fanciful. I yeah. hope he's right. I hope he's right. I would say we're looking more towards the end of 2024, maybe into 2025. As I've said in my sh when I talked to you on Tuesdays, I felt this year was going to be very volatile. And when I came on and everyone was really happy because the FTSE had it hit 8,000, I did caution people and I did say that I felt it would go back to round about 7,500, even 7,000. And then if people felt like playing the market, maybe go into a FTSE tracker – Mm. And hopefully it would go back up. And today the FTSE is at 7387. So it's gone down dramatically from the 8,000. So if people were buoyed by that news and they went into the markets and they bought a FTSE tracker at 8,000, they have now lost a considerable amount of money. And I think that's where people need to be wary. People tend, when the markets are looking good, when the, they're up, to invest. The best time to invest is when the markets are down. Yeah, of course. Because then yeah. you've got the upside to come. Mm -hmm. Um, yesterday, with, with the big falls, I mean, you mentioned uh, the, the chap with his pension, which would be a good example, because as you said, that money gets invested. Um, yeah. People would have been tracker, have an index tracker yesterday, so they'd have seen that fall of 4%. What about, oh, yes. indi what about individual bank shares? Do they make up many people's portfolios? Are there some in there? No. Most people would not, at the moment, I hope have a fund that was invested in banking shares. Um, for I think most people are wary about them. Um, we know that uh, banks have a lot of off-balance sheet um, stuff, which 
is basically debt. So we've got things like um, derivatives that are not on the balance sheet, which are, have a huge amount of debt. I think no one would have gone fully into the banking sector. I mm. hope no one has. Right. Um, it would be very, very foolish. Um, obviously, if you have some funds, some of them may be invested slightly in banking, but that would have been hedged off against other things. So, so hopefully you haven't taken a huge hit. However, if you'd invested most of your money in, say, um, banking shares, so say the banks were paying a good dividend like HSBC or Santander or Barclays and you put all your investments into banking shares to get the good dividends, you will still get the good dividends, but your actual holding will have fallen significantly. And that's what I say to people when you look at buying things that are paying you a good dividend. You will get that income every year as long as they keep paying the dividend. However, you have to still remember that your initial holding, like anything, can go down as well as up. And for people that have banking shares at the moment, they will have gone down significantly. And my advice is to hold them and to ride this out, especially if you are receiving a good dividend on them. Please, no knee-jerk reaction. That's what markets love because it means that the big people can go in and buy stuff really, really cheaply because, uh, sadly, some people have reacted and sold out when the markets are low. Mm. If you sell out when they're low, you're actually crystallizing your loss. You're actually making it a physical loss. If you don't and you hold on, it will come back. It's a paper loss at the moment. Please remember, there is a, a difference. If you are heavily invested in banks, check what banks you're invested in, please. Mm. If it's through an advisor, call up that advisor and ask them what your exposure is and how those banks are doing and, you know, and what their financials look like. And maybe you will need to take a loss and switch into something that isn't so volatile. But as I said, hopefully no one out there has an investment portfolio purely in banking stocks. No, I wouldn't have thought so. So it was um, the Chancellor was on his feet yesterday. Did we mention in there about the pensions and what would have been... Oh, uh, yes. We're just going to quickly touch on pensions. Right. The there used to be a lifetime allowance on pensions, so it meant your pension pot could only grow to just over a million, and after that, um, you got taxed. What the Chancellor did yesterday was he scrapped that, and the main business that some financial advisors did was something called Curox, which is a qualified, recognised overseas pension scheme. And when people got near the lifetime allowance, they were advised to move into a Curox because that was not subject to the UK lifetime allowance because it was not UK based. Now, effectively, over night he has wiped out that business because there is no reason unless you don't want to have any connections with the UK to move into a cure ops um, however saying that he has scrapped the lifetime allowance however if there's a general election and say Labour get in there is no guarantee that they will not reinstate that lifetime allowance on pensions so whilst at the moment it looks very very uh, good to keep your pensions where they are please be realistic and realize if a new government gets in they can reinstate that lifetime allowance literally overnight the same as he scrapped it oh, i see okay i'm i'm not sure they would because it would be uh, politically not viable but they may bring it back at a certain level rather than scrapping it all together so be wary but if you've just done a cure ops and you are near the lifetime allowance maybe it's time to think about putting that on hold if it's not going to cost you anything and just wait and see also the UK government has extended its deadline for topping up UK state pensions now that was meant to run out they've extended it till the 31st of June 23 to give taxpayers more time to fill in their national insurance gaps, okay? And there are certain websites that you can get um, in look at. You can look at your national insurance record. You can do state pension forecast. And I'll send that information through to Bay Radio so they can post it so you can look it up. Perfect, okay. Well, uh, that, how far does that go back? It, that. Was it about 2004 or 2006, I think, as far back as you can go? Yes, you can go. It wasn't so, your whole so anyone lifetime. who has gaps in their national insurance records from April 2006 onwards yeah. okay. now has more time to decide whether to fill those gaps and boost their UK stem pension. So it depends on your um, complete years between 2006 and 2016. Okay. And it will give you more money when you retire. Um, and please look into it because for, for some people it is very, very worthwhile doing. And I mean, it, you know, it is. Other 
other people not so much but please i will get that to bay radio hopefully later today and then we can get that sorted and just one thing before we go um my head office has issued a fraud notice to me and black towers become aware that of certain fraudulent schemes that have been conducted by individuals or organizations claiming to be black tower group now i don't know if that's because at the moment we are very very successful and we're expanding but they are they're, what they're doing is they are setting up bogus websites, social media accounts, oh. and sending people unsolicited mails and text messages. And they're using the Black Tower logo, and they're using other company information without permission, I have to add. And the fraudulent websites have no association to Black Tower. And what they are is one of them is Black Tower FM, um, and it's um, dash CFD.com, Black Tower FM dot live. Now, our one is Black Tower FM for financial management dot com that's it okay yep. um, if you have any if you receive any messages or anything that's suspicious please let us know and we'll check into it but just to warn people that's been brought to my attention as well but as I said before with banking just check what you have in the banks and please if you can manage the amount you have in the banks if you need any advice please call Black Tower um, if we're not there you will get a message we will come back to you or send an email to info at black tower fm for financial management dot com put by radio attention Christina, it'll come through to me. I am out seeing clients today and tomorrow, but when I get back in the evening, I know it sounds really sad, I do go through my emails. <laughs> yeah, well, money never sleeps and all that. And, and even... while I may not phone you at 9, 10 o'clock at night, I will take note. And if I don't phone you today or tomorrow, I will phone you as soon as possible. And if it's yeah. urgent, I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Or one of my team will. You have to remember that Black Tower is not just the one person. It's not just me. There's seven other financial advisors in my team and my PA and some admin assistants. So, it, you know, it's, it's a large group. We've been going 40 odd years. We've got hundreds of financial advisors. And we're all to here to help you if you can. So please, I know it's a worrying time um, for people with bank accounts, with pensions, with investments. But please, no knee-jerk reaction. Just sit tight. And if you do have any questions, if you do need help rearranging your assets, please just get in touch. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. Great. I was going to ask you if you wanted to, if this was like a normal one, and we just did it all in one hit. So that's fine. That's going to be covered. <laughs> covered everything there, I think. It's just because I have got to go out in a minute to go and yeah, see yeah, clients. Sure. So no, sorry about that. Sorry to get it all three in one hit. And, and, but as I said, please, people, I know it is worrying. It's worrying for me. Everyone has pensions. Everyone has, you know, hopefully, you know, people have pensions that or investments or money in bank accounts. It worries us all. Um, and we are powerless to stop this. As I said, the central bank in Switzerland has, t has, t has stepped in to stop the rot, hopefully, at Credit Suisse. And in the US, they've guaranteed deposits it's up to a certain amount. But please, you've got to do some work yourself. You've got to start to look after your own assets, your own money, and work from there. Yeah. Okay, so all that in the budget yesterday. And, of course, the old British tradition is to look at cigarettes and alcohol. Price of a pint frozen. Oh, I know. 10% uh, on alcohol. Wine and spirits up a little bit, but not beer. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> believe that. I know. Everyone's going to have beer bellies, aren't they? That's really good. <laughs> it's to help the pubs, I think, in their trouble. We're going to have to go. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you on Tuesday. Thanks ever so much for that today. Okay, thank bit, you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That's Christina Brady Bye. from Black Tower Financial Management, blacktowerfm.com, the only website you need to go to. Listening and exceeding expectations for over 31 years. Black Tower Financial Management, the team you want by your side. Visit blacktowerfm.com.